Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name is Todd and uh, today I wanted to go over just uh, some information on this base 8K, this Tar Amps base 8K, uh, one ohm version of the uh, amplifier. And you know me, I always like to release information to help other people um, in their repair ventures. Please excuse the mess also, pretty busy lately. Uh, but I want to make an update on my information on uh, just general uh, amplifier repair. And it's going to come down to what I call complacency. And uh, I have specific ways that I uh, diagnose and troubleshoot amplifiers. And I just get in the habit of seeing one issue and uh, assuming that it will take care of the issue when I'm done repairing it. Uh, so this a uh, this uh, base 8K had the typical shorted output section with the blown traces. Typical, standard, I've done this a hundred times. But when I went to start it up, of course, you'd hear the inductors, you'd hear that brief click in the inductor. That tells you the signal is trying, but it went right into protect. And I'm like, what's going on? So, discharge my rails. Of course, remember guys, please make sure your rails are discharged when you're probing around these things. Um, Yeah, I could, uh, you should see a board that I did yesterday where I didn't discharge the rails. It, it was quite the uh, pop in the eardrums. So, um, it went into protect. So I discharged it and I was poking around, seeing what's going on. I had the right resistance values. Uh, what is that? 10.8K to 11.1K. Uh, I think it's 10.8 on the low side here. Let me just double check for you guys. Give you guys the right information, of course. Uh, we are, yes, 10.8 and 11.1, I think. 11.2. Uh, Okay, pretty close. I was close. Thermal paste. Uh, so, uh, as I always say, I do a lot of my repairs based on the available information given by resistance. And uh, each amplifier that's the same design should have the same resistance. More or less. I mean, of course there's tolerances. Uh, but that's how I work. I've said it a hundred times. That's how I do my work is by resistance. So it all checked fine. The side that I worked on, I repaired the traces as usual, replaced this. Uh, these are 15 volt Zener diodes too, by the way, guys. I replaced the Zener diodes. All, everything checked out fine. Um, went to fire it up and it would go into protect. So I started looking around. Um, and I found what I should have done originally before starting the amplifier is you take take one of your meter probes and go to ground and go to your speaker terminal. Well, this speaker terminal here is a direct short to ground. I think these should read uh, roughly third, 28 to 30 5-ish K, um, your, which I think you'll find here through your DC offset circuit. The other side is, um, oh, I correct me while I'm wrong here, it could show, but this side is reading, you know, about 50, 49, but about 50 K. Dead short. Point one of an ohm. So the, the terminal is in relation to which side of the amplifier you, the short could potentially be on. So this terminal here is closest to this side. This terminal is closest to this side. If you were to follow this terminal, it does go to this inductor. This terminal goes to this inductor. Well, this terminal has a short to ground. And my gate to source values are fine. 10.8K and 11.18K. 11 and that's where I took the assumption it was okay to start because my gate values were reading correct. 
on both sides of the amplifier. Usually if you're, uh, since there's no buffer drivers on this amp, if you had any gate values that were off, your SI uh, 8244 would be blown. Uh, there's nothing in between really the transistor and the SI chip. So if I have the right resistance value here, I know the SI chip is okay. But if I come over here and measure drain to source, I have a direct short, 0.1 ohms between uh, drain and source. So when this amp failed, it's, it's rare to have a uh, drain source short. Um, it's rare to have the transistor have a drain source short without the thing being blown apart because these things run at such high voltages. So this drain source is about 360K. It looks like I've already charged the uh, bootstrap circuit. See, or 3.1 megs, there we go. 3.1 megs, 3.1 megs, so the bootstrap circuit's charged. But this one over here, your low side, has a direct short on it. Is it the transistor? Or is it the drive? Um, it's low side. Um, I'm probably going to just at this point remove the three low side transistors and see if that short is before or after the transistor itself. Oh, my little mat here this is what helps keep the board from bowing in the middle when it's not when it's on the uh, when it's flipped around if you guys are wondering what that's about i do not like to put stress on pcbs because the traces on these things um can go bad so let's go ahead bust out the uh, fr301 here and remove the three low side transistors these are the uh, IRF B 4115s I think these are the B's does it say B on it IRF B 4115 IRF B 4115 yeah sorry I get in a bad habit of just calling things 4115s or 4127s 4227s but Hopefully people understand what I'm talking about. As I've said before, my term terminology may not be politically correct across the board of amplifier repair. Um, I, uh, I do what I do and uh, other people do what they do. So, and of course I don't like thermal paste, so I like to keep my stuff clean. All right. Now the question is, is was it one of the transistors. That's what I want to know. Uh, it's it's kind of rare for the uh, drain source to short in that fashion. Well, look at that, 42K. So now our drain source short is gone. So what, I guess what I'm getting at is don't get complacent in what you do on a daily basis because you may overlook something just as simple as a drain source short that potentially could just damage what you just the work you just performed so uh, uh thermal paste so don't take what i say as gospel when it comes to repair it's what i do it's how i do my work and sometimes, as I show you here, that I do miss some obvious things that could have been found on initial checks. So now you'll see that you're probably, that you're not shorted to ground here on this terminal. No. Uh, so just to correct the information, uh, you're a 55K, 55.4K, 79.0K. Now again, this is going to be determined through your DC offset circuit. So these values will change based on how your circuit is um, adjusted to. But you don't want to see low resistance values. I have said this time and time again. Uh, in resistance mode, a low resistance value, if it's unexpected, is incorrect. 
an expected low resistance value like this snubber here, one ohm. There it is, 1.1 ohm because my leads are a 0.1 ohm. Uh, unless you know it's a low resistance circuit, you should not have low resistance values anywhere really on an amplifier. Uh, especially on your outputs. If you're if you're reading a low resistance on an output terminal to ground, well, you know that that output terminal, when it tries to fire up, will go to ground. And of course, it'll go into protection. Let me just double check the high side. 28K, we're looking great still. 11.1, 11.1, 1. 11.1. So let's... Uh, Let's see which one of these guys gave me the fault here. And this goes back to, you know, uh, this side, this fault uh, is not originally quoted because I did not catch it. Usually, though, um, I can pretty much catch anything. Sometimes I do get some items that slip through. I'll self-test. This has a direct short. Let's check the others. Oh, that one there is good. And this one here, that is not good. The RDS on that says 0.27K. And that one's shorted. So this is going to need three more uh, 4115s put in the output section. So I will get that done, and I guarantee more than likely, guarantee, nah, I won't guarantee, but I will say more than likely this amplifier will start. Thermal paste. Clean up the thermal paste. Uh, but that's really what I wanted to get across today was double check before you start an amp, so you don't damage the work that you've already done because there could be an issue somewhere else on the board that may not be typical. Again, it's rare to have a drain source short and not have anything affect the gate. It's rare. But that's why I make videos like this is to give this information out here in the world for everyone to know and give values uh, when they do open one of these up. Please, though, be careful. <laughs> when you do open one up and check, start checking values. Uh, please make sure you just discharge those rails, guys. Keep your fingers safe out of the rails. These things hold a ton of current. So stay safe. We'll catch you on the next one. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, guys.